The first obligation imposed on those who plan or decide upon attacks is the obligation to do everything feasible to verify that targets are military objectives and that attacking them will not cause disproportionate harm to civilians or civilian objects. This obligation of verification aims at ensuring respect for both the principle of distinction and the principle of proportionality. In order to satisfy this obligation, it is clear that sufficient information must be collected. But this obligation is not absolute. It is not an obligation of result, but an obligation of means. Attackers are only required to employ all feasible measures to acquire information. This depends upon the technical means of detection that belligerents have at their disposal. Some air forces have modern reconnaissance devices like satellites or drones, while others do not. The obligation will also vary according to the circumstances around the attack, including time constraints, which may prevent all possible sources of information being exhausted. What counts is that belligerents employ all the means available to them to get proper information about the nature of the target and the environment surrounding it in order to assess the potential cultural damage resulting from the attack. Gathering information must start at the earliest planning stages of the attack. If the decision to target is not taken directly after getting the information, it might be necessary to update the information before launching the attack in order to be sure that things have not changed on the ground as some time elapsed since the information has been obtained. However, it is clear that this obligation to collect information must be assessed in light of the circumstances ruling at the time. As rightly emphasized by scholars, any post-event reviewer must resist the built-in temptation to scrutinize the situation with the benefit of knowledge of the facts as they actually unfolded. The second obligation of precaution imposed on those who plan or decide upon attacks is the obligation to do everything feasible to choose means and methods of warfare with a view of avoiding or at least minimizing collateral damage to civilians and civilian objects. This is also an obligation of means, the respect of which must be assessed in light of the circumstances ruling at the time of the attack, including the military resources of belligerents and, in particular, the type of weapons that they possess. This obligation does not require belligerents who possess precise smart weapons in their arsenal to use them in every attack. If an attack by traditional weaponry is not expected to cause any collateral damage, there is no need to resort to smart weapons. Also, commanders may want to use the stock of smart weapons sparingly in case of a more compelling need at a later time. It is nevertheless clear that such a weapon must be used when it is the only means to avoid excessive collateral damage to civilians. Otherwise, the attack cannot be carried out. This second obligation of precaution does not merely limit the choice of weapons, but also imposes a series of other constraints. For instance, planners should consider the effects that the timing of the attack will have upon civilian casualties. If feasible, attacks against industrial plants, which constitute a military objective, must be carried out over the weekend or at night in order to minimize the losses among workers. Other factors should also be taken into account, like the meteorological conditions, the angle of the attacks, or any other available strategical choice which may minimize collateral damage, such as 
resorting to cyber attack rather than a traditional attack. The third and last obligation of precaution binding upon those who plan or decide upon attacks does not need any specific comment. It is a logical consequence of the principle of proportionality. Belligerents must refrain from launching an attack expected to cause excessive collateral damage to civilians or civilian objects as compared to the anticipated military advantage. And it is clearly an absolute obligation, and not an obligation of means, 